Hello there and welcome. In this episode, we're going to continue upgrading our inventory into a stackable inventory. So in the previous episodes, we added the option to have stacks for each item. So we can have multiple items in each slot. We also added the option to split the different stacks and also to merge them. But we are still not done because we have one very important thing in I'm talking about removing items from the inventory. Our old removing method will not work with the new system, so it's important to upgrade it as well. And we're using the remove method for different parts in the game. For example, when we craft an item, we need to remove the resources we used to create it. So if you got any errors, it's just because we're still not done upgrading the system. So if we go into our inventory system script and we go to the remove item method, we can see that this is the old way it was working when we only had one item in each slot. But right now we have an option to add multiple items into the same slot to have stacks. So this will not work. But before we change and upgrade this method, I want to do some kind of improvement to the code for our inventory script. So if we go over here to the top, we can see that we're storing the slots as game objects. And this is something that can work. We can always get the slot game object and then just get the actual component for the slot. Because if you remember, we created an inventory slot script that will be on every slot. And this is something that we introduced for the stackable system. If we go to our canvas, inventory screen, slot, Every slot now has this inventory slot script and this slot script is referencing the item in the slot. So instead of saving the items inside as game objects, we're going to refactor the entire script to save inventory slots. And this way it's going to make our code much cleaner because we don't have to always get the component out of the game object. For example, over here, you can see that we get the stack and then we get the component for the inventory slot. But there is no reason to do this because every slot should be this inventory slot. So the stack should also be an inventory slot, right? And we can see this pattern all over. We're always getting the inventory slot out of the slot game object. And this is not something very difficult. We simply need to change all the different places we're storing the slot. So first of all, we're going to start over here with the slot list and we're simply going to change it to use inventory slots. Now, obviously, after we do this change, we're going to see a lot of errors with the code, but that's just because we still need to change the other things. Then over here, we have a reference to the slot to equip. We also need to change it to be an inventory slot. Then we're going to scroll down and we can see an error over here. And that's just because we get the child instead of the inventory slot. So we're going to change this instead of getting the game object and add it to the list. We need to add an inventory slot. So we're simply going to do this inventory slot slot. And this is the auto completion. So child get component inventory slot. This is something we need to do over here, but later we don't have to do this anymore because everything will be saved as a slot. Now, if we continue and scroll down over here, we have our add to inventory method, which is a very important method. And over here, we're getting the stack to check if we actually have a stack, but we're saving this as a game object. So let's change this to inventory slot. We're going to get an error, but that's fine. We're going to fix this. And we can see over here that the stack is an inventory slot, but we're still looking for a component inside of it. So there is no need to do this. We can simply remove all of this and get these fields right from the stack because now the stack is the actual inventory slot. We can also remove this debug because we don't need it anymore. And these still show errors because the methods themselves are returning a game object instead of an inventory slot, but we're going to fix them when we scroll down. So we have this method over here. We're going to change this to be inventory slot, obviously, because the slots are inventory slots and we don't need to get a reference to the inventory slot. We're simply going to get the slot right away. So we can copy this and paste it over here. So this will be the actual name of the slot. And we're just going to remove this. 
and now it's going to work the same way. And of course, we also need to return an actual inventory slot out of the method. So you can see that the method became a bit simpler. So let's also remove these spaces over here. Now we're going to continue. We have this method over here. So again, we're going to change this to inventory slot. And we need to return an inventory slot out of the method. And we also need to make sure we return an inventory slot over here. Let's do this. Then we're going to continue and scroll down and we have this method that checks for the slots available. And again, we need to simply change this to inventory slot. And that's it. We're going to continue. We're going to skip the remove item for now because we need to create an entirely new method. We're going to look at this recalculate list and over here as well, we need to change this to inventory slot. And we can make this method a bit simpler. Of course, it's going to work this way, but we're still looking for the inventory slot, although we know this is an inventory slot. So we can just change this and rename it to inventory. Inventory slot. And we don't need to check if it has an inventory slot because obviously it's an inventory slot. So we're going to remove this if, and we also don't need to check what is the item in slot. Of course we can do this. We can still check for the inventory item. So we're simply going to check this, but we don't need to get the component. We can simply get the item in slot straight from the inventory slot. And now it will work and we can see that the method is a bit cleaner. Now that we covered all of these methods and we see that there are no errors, we get these red ones, but this is not an error. This is just an indication that there were changes made, but we don't have any errors. And now the entire inventory system over here is working with inventory slots instead of game objects. And this is a more correct way to work because we don't want to always get the component out of the game object. We just want to reference the component right away. And now that all of this is done, we can go over here to our remove item method. And for now, we can just comment this out until we create the new one. So control KC. And we're going to create the new version. So it's a rather long method, but we're basically just looping over all the slots. We're checking if there is actually the item that we want to remove, and then we remove it. But then we also check if the stack has reached zero, because if it reached zero, we also want to remove the stack. Then after we remove one item, we break out of this for each loop, and then we go over it again, because maybe we have more than one item to remove. Maybe we want to remove two sticks. So we go over it again and we remove the second instance. And this way, even if we have two different stacks and each stack has one stick, then we're going to find the first stack, remove the stick, destroy the stack, and then find the second stack and remove the stick and destroy it. And this way it's going to work. And the method just became longer because we have more complex situations where we have multiple stacks and each stack can have multiple items and we want to make sure it works correctly. Then also we have this check over here because if we are going to test around and we're going to try to remove more items than we actually have, it's just going to create some kind of loop and it's going to crash our software so we don't want this to happen. 
it will not happen in real life because in real life we will never remove an amount that we don't really have in our inventory right we only remove something that we know that we have so this will never happen in real life but in debug it can happen it can cause errors so we just want to break if it happens and then we also do our recalculations the same way we did it over here right at the end of this so now you can keep this method but there is no real need so i'm going to delete it and now this new feature should work so if we run the game and we pick up a stone and then another stone and a third stone fourth stone we open the inventory we know that our stacks are three each so we're simply going to move them around we can hold shift and split them we can merge them anyway now we want to be able to craft something for example this axe but we need also sticks and i don't have sticks over here but maybe we have something else let's see so let's find some sticks and i don't have sticks over here let's just go back to our starter area i'm just going to increase the speed of the player so i'm going to set it to 50 and this way we can run much faster and let's look for sticks we have a stick over here So now we can see that we have four stones, three sticks, and this is enough. We can also see them inside the inventory. So now when we're going to craft, we can see that this was crafted and they were removed from the inventory and everything is working. So the remove method is working as it should. So now we are done with the remove item method. We also covered all the different methods inside the inventory system. And we know that everything is working. We know that we can drag, we can split, we can remove items. And we see that all of these things are working. All the different methods are working. But just know that there will probably be things that will not work correctly, especially with systems outside of the inventory system. For example, the quest system. I don't know if everything should work as we want. It will use the same methods, so it will probably work for the most part, but maybe smaller parts of our code will not work, so you need to adjust it. And the reason that I'm not going to start covering everything is because this is not a real game. This is not a product that I will release so i don't want to waste time on these fine tunings this is something that you will have to do with your own game you will have to do some qa some adjustments some bug fixes this is a part of every game development if you see that something is not working some kind of system after we did this change with the stackable inventory then let me know in the comment section and if i see that many of you are complaining about the same thing i'm going to do a new episode that will cover all of these things but for now i want to continue with other things in our tutorial and other things like the shopping system like enemies like getting hurt and maybe respawning death and there's still many other things that we did not cover in this tutorial so i don't want to get stuck on something and Again, if you have a problem, let me know. Maybe we can figure it out. Maybe I'm going to create a new episode later. So that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like. Please subscribe. You also have the option to become a member of this channel right now. You can select the tier that you want and then get different perks. And of course, becoming a member will give you access to our Discord server. So over there, you can get more support. You can ask questions instead of doing all of this in the comment section. So that's all. And I'll see you next time.